Welcome, Anna. Thank you so much for agreeing to chat with me today. This is Anna from NeuroGal MD, an awesome YouTube channel that brings a very unique angle to videos and reaction videos. Thank you for talking to me today, Anna. Welcome. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me, Rosalie. I'm honored that you agreed to chat with me a little bit. Uh, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Who are you and what uh, is your YouTube channel all about? Sure. Um, so my name is Anna. I am um, a neurologist uh, and that's my day job. And uh, I, I am in love with the brain. So I, I decided that back in 2016, I would create a channel just discussing all things related to the brain. And that's what I do here on my YouTube channel. Just talk about all sorts of topics related to the brain and music reaction videos are included in that. And I react to music uh, videos and try to add some of my input and thoughts uh, from my perspective as a neurologist. I think it's awesome. A just side note as a as a fan of yours oh, and uh, you. the fact that you're coming to the to the platform with such um education and I think that that's awesome because obviously as you know we there's a huge plethora of things that are available on YouTube from substance and things that are educational and of value to the you know the clickbait and the quick <laughs> Um, yeah. And I think I love your angle because I find that respectable that you're bringing in your expertise. What led you to want to do reaction videos in addition to the other content? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so I've always been interested in music, very passionate about music, just like you, mm -hmm. um, from a very early age. And um, so I'm just going to take a little step back. When the yeah. pandemic hit, uh, I had a baby. And I quit my, thank you. Thank you. So he was my first and um, I quit my job as a, neur a neurologist at the time. And so I was really used to being around people, being social. And then all of a sudden the pandemic hit, I quit my job. I just had a baby and um, it was really isolating as I'm sure like pretty much everyone yeah. in the world was feeling the same way. And I turned to music uh, to kind of fill that social void. And I think a lot of people did that. And it, it makes sense because music does activate different regions of the brain that are involved in social interaction. So I remember reading articles and watching videos about people singing from their balconies at the beginning of the pandemic and participating in Zoom videos where they were singing mm -hmm. with each other. And mm -hmm. um, that's what me and my baby did. We just listened to music that. all day long. And it really, really filled that void and we bonded over it. And then with my YouTube channel, just going back to music reaction videos, um, I had a, a dear subscriber recommend to me that I react to Harry Mack, which I'm sure many of your viewers yeah. are already familiar with, and you mm -hmm. are too. So he's yeah. that, for anybody who's not familiar, he's, um, he's an incredible freestyle rapper who does freestyles on, on his channel for people. And so I decided that I would go ahead and react to one of his songs. Uh, and I, I just fell in love with, I, I just fell in love with reaction videos after that, because as I was reacting to his video, I thought like, oh my God, what is going on in his brain as he's doing this freestyle? And so I was able to kind of give this input uh, based on what I saw with him. Uh, about the neuroscience of freestyling and I got to kind of incorporate that into the reaction and um, and it was a big hit and then my here my you are <laughs> yeah here I am like, uh, it was very popular and uh, people wanted to me to do more of it so I kept I love on doing that. it yeah it's it's so exciting to see how there are so many different angles which is the beauty of art and music to be specific that I find um, people are able to bring to the table. So where you have the vocal coaches or the rappers, right? You're bringing in that the expertise from the neuroscientific and the neurological standpoint. And I, I can see many people enjoying that because I'm sure there's a lot of education that those who don't know this type of content will pull. In addition to seeing your emotional response and what's happening in your mind. Yeah, that's, that's exciting. So tell me what has been the feedback? You said it was it was uh, very popular. What has, how have the people received it? Why do you think they've received it so well? Um, you know, I think I, that's a great question. And I, I actually wonder, I've wondered why music reaction videos in general have been so popular. And so I'm glad that you're making this documentary because 
it's such it's such an interesting question and I think mm -hmm. that for for me personally as well as for all the music reactors I think it brings a level of authenticity to okay. the viewer and um, it allows the viewer to really connect with not only the person who's reacting to the video but also to the music video themselves so I guess I'm going to break this down into two two answers for me personally I've really enjoyed music reaction videos because I feel like I'm able to be my most authentic self uh, okay. to my audience and I could display emotions that I probably couldn't display in other video categories and okay. I I yeah. think the audience really appreciates that and then my second answer to your question is just for music reaction videos in general, I think um, I think it's a highly social experience for mm -hmm. the people who are watching the music reaction. And uh, when you think about it from like a neuroscience perspective, um, there's this thing, there's this very interesting type of neuron in our brains called the mirror neuron. So mirror neurons, I don't know if you've heard of them, but they are activated when both a person is performing an action. So say I'm lifting this delicious hot cup of tea and I'm sipping it. Mm -hmm. mm. So my mirror, mirror neurons are being activated, but they're also being activated if I watch you hold up a cup of tea and drink that hot, delicious cup of tea. So I'm sharing that experience with you, even though I'm not personally drinking the tea my mirror neurons are activating. So the same thing happens with people who are watching music reaction videos. They, their mirror neurons are being activated and they share the same joy, surprise, nostalgia, whatever layered emotions the music reactor is experiencing, they share the same emotion. So it's a highly bonding, highly social interaction. And I think that that's the key to why music reaction videos are so popular. And I think the pandemic yeah. just like made that even that category even more popular. I am loving this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm like soaking up your every word. And, oh, because I'm learning in real time, you know, because when you said mirror neurons, it made me think of mirror ring, right? And so from a psychological standpoint, I know a bit about things like, you know, the projecting, the transferring that we can do, the mm -hmm. mirroring. But to hear it from that scientific standpoint, you know, that's a that's a vast field that I know, don't know nearly as much about as you. And it's fascinating to see the scientific angle of what's happening with those neurons on those pathways that are being built. But I, I, I love that you said that because, quite frankly, well, I understand that there's something about that connection. Like you said, it gives people this this community, which people often express even in the comment section. It's so interesting just to hear that the scientific evidence for it. Now, would you say that when people are experiencing that um, reaction or they're watching the reaction and their mirror neurons are being uh, fired, being activated, firing, which I, I suppose I should say, are they experiencing those emotions to the same degree? Or would you say it's like a watered down version? Say you drank the actual tea, so you're having it 100% and I'm watching you, so mine is like 80. Is there uh, is there scientific evidence to say that one is less than the other or does it not matter? Mm. Oh, that's a great question. Tea. Yeah, that's a great question. I don't know if there's any evidence that, that shows the degree on a personal level, but okay. they, have, they have done studies that... Um, that kind of tie in mirror neurons with, uh, okay, this is really fascinating with how brains synchronize with each other when people are listening to music. So mm -hmm. they've done studies where people in groups are listening to songs uh, being performed by a musician and they found that their brains highly synchronize with the brains of the musician that is performing the song. And wow. what they what they found was that the the more they enjoyed the song, the stronger the synchronization. So I think I think what we could take away from that is that the more you actually enjoy the song, the more it resonates with you, and probably the more activated your mirror neurons are. Um, wow. So I yeah, it's fascinating. That is fascinating. Oh my goodness, I'm geeking out over here so yeah. hard. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's so interesting. So if if that is happening, the synchron synchronizing of the brains, like at a concert, like you said, 
what happens to the body as the brain, as the, those, um, those minds, those brains are synchronizing. Is there some type of release of chemicals? Is it mm -hmm. always just the feel good or can it also be those emotions? I won't call them negative because there's no such thing as negative emotions, but the kind we don't like as much, right? The anger or the grief. How, how mm -hmm. does that work when it comes to mirroring neurons? When people are listening to music that deeply resonates with them and they're in a group setting and, and their brains are synchronizing with each other and with the musician, um, in general, there, there are different pathways that are activated. The most common ones are the reward circuitry. So this is like the dopamine, this is called the dopaminergic pathway, the one that releases dopamine. So that's why music can feel very comforting and act and feel very rewarding to listen to. It also can activate the bonding circuitry. So the biggest bonding hormone is called oxytocin. So this is the one that's commonly known to be released when a mom gives birth to her child and that helps bonding to bond the mom with the child and vice versa. So the oxytocin is also released when we're uh, when we're listening to music that we highly enjoy and it and that is one of the key reasons why music is so social inherently uh, within the human condition because it helps with social bonding because of that oxytocin that's released. Um, so, and then it also has been um, thought to, has been shown to decrease cortisol levels. So it decreases the stress response when you're listening to, um, to music that you enjoy. So if, if most of music, if not all of music creates this synchronization and is therapeutic, right? Do you think there's ever the possibility of the, of the, um, the hormones that increase our stress, like yeah. cortisol and these other um, hormones that create more of the stress or the rage in us. Do you think that there is ever the possibility of reverse effect or like with certain songs or certain type of music? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Or is it always just the therapeutic? Because I know even metal and those hardcore songs can be therapeutic to many, right? Even though it yeah. sounds intense and aggressive, there's still a catharsis or a sort of a release that happens there for beneficial. Is there ever... Right music that you think creates the averse effect? Uh, effect? Mm -hmm. And I'm not quite sure that that has ever been studied, but it is, okay. it is something worth looking into because yeah. you're right, different musical genres do create different effects. And right. even though something like metal could be highly cathartic, are there any adverse effects on the brain? Right. Um, that's a great question. And I'm not sure that that's been studied, okay. but I'm going to look into it actually after yeah. we finish our, our conversation. Let me know what you find. Cause I would, I would be curious to know because I've, I don't know enough about it, but I've heard, um, it, in distant theories, um, that, you know, certain levels of EPM levels or the decibel, like right. How, how high or loud something is, mm -hmm. or the, the beat, how fast something, how fast the rhythm is that that can have an effect on us. Uh, yeah. What what would you what do you know about that when it comes to those neurons firing in our brain? Is there a difference mm. with the way our body and our brain responds to calming or slower rhythms, um, certain notes, chords mm -hmm. over others? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. There is a, a distinct physiological effect that can occur with different BPMs, with different rhythms, and um, I don't know the details about like the specifics of what causes what, but I do know that like there is a specific range of BPMs that mm -hmm. can actually increase the risk of someone being involved in an accident, for instance, like a, a motor vehicle accident. Really? And there are specific songs, even like children's songs. Uh, I forget what children's songs there are that can actually increase the risk of motor vehicle accidents. But I, I literally just read that a couple it's gotta weeks be, ago. It's, it's gotta be Baby Shark. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my just, gosh! Yes. <laughs> probably just just for the reason that it'll drive parents so crazy that they're going to get distracted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's interesting. So okay, so that there that there are um that there's the possibility that certain frequencies would affect a person somehow. Maybe their brain waves or or their heart rate, or is it maybe not just a neurological thing, but perhaps also somatic in general? Right. Yeah. Um. So there there is some evidence to support that um that diff that songs and their rhythms can not only modulate brain frequencies but also uh -huh. the the heart rate function and heart rate variability okay. which i suppose yeah. the signals are being sent out from the brain mm -hmm. right uh, it's highly connected of course if people are just to go back to that synchronicity of the brain if people are 
experiencing this together to whatever degree, right? As much as the uh, artist or person sipping the tea or perhaps to a letter, lesser degree, what are some of the the health benefits? It makes me strongly think of empathy since, you know, I'm trying mm-hmm. to look at it from the psychological standpoint. You mm-hmm. spoke of people feeling with experiencing, I see you drinking tea and you feel that warm, fuzzy feeling. And now I'm feeling it with you, even though I don't have tea in my hand. It makes mm-hmm. me think of how beneficial empathy can be. And that often yeah. comes into play with authenticity, as you said earlier. Talk to me a little bit about that. What is what what benefits would that type of synchronizing have on a person, and why is it why is it soaked up so much by the world on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Talk about empathy, and I I think you're, I think that's key. I think music allows us to become more in tune with our own emotions. Mm-hmm. And again, okay. by activating different regions of the brain, it also allows us to be more empathetic with other people. So they've done studies in, I believe, children that found that listening to music can help um, increase empathy and collaboration and cooperation among groups of kids. And then wow. they've also done study, like I, at least one study that showed that music can increase empathy of an in-group for an out-group. So like one member of a a community group listening to music can actually increase empathy for members that are not within that group. So I think that when when you think about having empathy for people who are different from you, right? Yeah, Um, Yeah. Music allows us to literally bond with with each other around the world. Like that's why I think your channel is so unique and so inspiring because I think that's one of the keys to your to your channel. It allows people to understand others even if they're not coming from the same part of the world or the I same see. culture. I see what you're so, saying. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, this yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, the sense of community like that's actually awesome you said that because when we're speaking of music or just reaction channels in general, we find all these different genres, right? You'll have metalheads coming to check out a rap song though that might not be yeah. their forte because they like the reactor or want to just see what this thumbnail was about or uh they'll you know listen to a neurologist explore Ren's music and the the you know these layers and yeah there's a new angle to something that they would have never considered. It makes a lot of sense. It's this, it's pulling people together. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. Okay. That's awesome. So, so from your um, expertise, from your, as a neurologist, when we're not just talking music, since reaction videos are done for all kinds of things, what are you, what do you think are some of the effects when we see reactions to say political videos or these panels Mm -hmm. and debates where there's often less of the community and the good feel and more of the tension, right? The yeah. opposite opinion or drama between men and women and, you know, all the different yeah. topics. What what happens in the brain when we're mm-hmm. reacting to or watching someone react to that? That's a really great question. And I don't think it's been studied. I think it would be, it would make for a very interesting experiment, a, an interesting research study. Um, okay. But I'm not quite sure if, the same parts of the brain are activated as say when when you're watching someone react to a music video because okay. well when you're listening to music different th- different parts of the brain are being activated um primarily the ones that are involved in empathy and okay. um you know bonding social bonding when you watch a political reaction video uh, mm-hmm. i think there are other factors that come into play like do you agree with the person who's reacting to the political commentary do you agree with the political commentary and i think it also highly depends on the person who's reacting if they're watching it uh, to gain a new perspective that Mm -hmm. might be a really enlightening video for that person but if they're watching it to reinforce what they already want to hear and they they hear that maybe it's not as beneficial or maybe they don't hear what they want to hear and then they get angry. And it's, it's something that my husband calls, what is it called? Anger porn. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> you know, when, so when you, that, you kind of yeah. try to, when you, you watch something and you get angry and then you feel mm-hmm. like vindicated because you're angry, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. So I yep. think it's like a slippery <laughs> slope when, uh-huh. when, when, when you go down, down that rabbit hole. Are those but, different? Are those different parts of the brain that are activated? Say, for example, someone who is 
you know, learning and going, oh, I like this, right? And there's those, you know, good feel chemicals being real, hormones being released versus a person that's coming for that bias confirmation and now gets enraged. Is that a different part of the brain that's responsible for this? Or is that all in the certain, in the same yeah. area, just the emotion yeah. work? Mm, good question. I think, I think when music is involved, I think you have a lot of what's called, well, communication between the left and the right hemisphere of the brain. So the left hemisphere in general is associated with logic, logical thinking, um, language, and then the right hemisphere is the more emotional, poetic, uh -huh. artistic part of the brain, the one that's um, maybe more social to a certain extent. Uh -huh. uh, and so I think when someone is listening to music, both hemispheres are activated uh, more equally, but okay. when someone is listening to political commentary or something that's just like verbal, I think their left hemisphere is likely a lot more involved. It's like the analytical, logical part of the brain. So uh, I think when both hemispheres are activated, it allows a person to gain a, a, a better perspective, a bigger perspective uh -huh. of whatever topic that they're immersing themselves in. Whereas when you're just listening to someone talking, mm -hmm. you're probably activating that left hemisphere okay. more. And this, this is just me thinking, I, like, yes, I don't know no, about that the makes, research. Yeah, but... no, no, no. That makes a lot of sense. So that makes a lot of sense. Do you, uh, would there be a, blah, I had to figure out how to word this question. If one side of the brain is activated more than the other side versus both, as it, with music, like you said, does that affect, is that connected to how uh, chemicals are released in our brain? Like the, you know, oxytocin, the dopamine and all these things, the good and the bad feel, you know, chemicals would be the right way to say it. Right. Or should I say yeah. hormones? Right. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean, both. Yeah. Both, both apply. Both and it's okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I does, think so. so. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say, is there a correlation, you know, between the, the chemicals that are released if one side of the brain is used over the other? Mm -hmm. That, you know, one side releases this chemical, the other this, or is that a completely different, you know, a part of the, the brain and it doesn't matter which side you're using, those chemicals just flow when you feel good or you're angry? I think the brain is so complicated that um, it's it's hard to say. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and every person is different, right? Um, we can make generalizations about how the brain is structured and the right versus the left hemisphere. But again, like everybody is different. Uh, you said yeah. something interesting. You said that every person is different, which was, you know, a little bit of a reality check for me. Cause I'm like, yeah, Rosalie, that makes sense. We're not computers, right? It's not all the same motherboard. We're all unique. And so it makes sense that everyone uses left versus right hemisphere more or less to a different degree. Mm -hmm. And what would, could you say that would also tie into how people perceive reaction videos and, content yeah oh yeah yeah i think uh people who are in general more open-minded are probably the ones who are going to be watching music reaction videos okay you know um there, there's a certain artistic appreciation that is involved in watching music reaction videos and then some yeah. people it's just not their style and i would mm -hmm. say they're probably more left brain yeah uh, people who who have a, other interests right but yeah, um, yeah. Going back to your question, though, about mm -hmm. activating certain parts of the brain, or left versus right, and are there more chemicals that are released when one part of the brain is active versus not? I think so. Each brain, so each brain is divided into two hemispheres. I'm going to try to not make this too complicated, but uh, each each hemisphere has its own like homologous. Uh, brain structure. So like, I'm going to use the, uh, a part of the brain called the amygdala, for instance, have you heard of the amygdala? Mm -hmm. So it's involved in the fear response. I mean, it's not just involved in the fear response. It's involved in any emotional response that's very like heightened, involves high, heightened emotions. Mm -hmm. So you have actually two amygdalas, one in the left brain and one in the right hemisphere. And so even though you have two structures, they have slightly different um, uh, functions depending on which hemisphere they're in. So I, I think that going back to your question, 
I don't even know. Like I'm, I'm sure that when one amygdala is like is is stronger than the other on the other side, it probably activates circuits that release hormones to it like a, okay. in a different way. I do have a, an interesting story to share with you. And I want to tell it to you because it kind of illustrates, it, it illustrates my answer in an easier okay. way, way to understand. So I bought a couple of years ago, I bought this thing called the God helmet. I don't okay. know if you've heard of it. So it basically is this like helmet made of electrodes and they emit magnetic pulses to the brain. And depending on where the pulses are going, it can emit a spiritual experience. You could actually look online and you could buy a God helmet and, and they've done some studies on it and it induces a religious or a spiritual experience in some people. So I thought I would buy one and test it out on myself. And, um, and so I did two experiments. One was to activate, to stimulate the right amygdala and hippocampus. So the right side of my brain. And I had like a pretty intense spiritual experience. Like I felt it was a very hard to explain experience, but it felt like I was, this sounds really weird, but it, it felt like I was like, I don't know, c communicating with God. Yeah. And it, it, it was just, it was a very intense experience, almost like, I guess, akin to a very deep meditation okay. session. Like okay. when you really feel in your body and you almost feel like God is enveloping you. Like that's how I felt. Okay. So that was me stimulating the right side of my brain. Okay. I stimulated the left side of my brain, the left amygdala, and the left of the campus. Oh my God. I literally felt like I was in hell. Like I felt mm -hmm. like there was like a demon behind me. And like the rest of the day, I just felt like an insane fear response. Like nothing, nothing out of the blue happened that day. It was purely that stimulation. So that's how lateralized our hemispheres are and the function of our brains are. Like you can stimulate the same part of both sides of the brain and get completely different responses. Crazy. Oh, my just exploded a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Oh so again, God. off topic, but I no, guess this I just is, wanted to explain. My, I'm thinking so many things. <laughs> Fascinating to see how the brain has been designed, how it's all set up and how it impacts us. So you said some very interesting things there, the stimulation to our brain. And I wonder why sometimes even with music and, you know, I know we're focusing on music today. I'll touch on a couple of other stuff I'd like to get your take on. But when it yeah. comes to music, it's just fascinating how for lack of better words, spiritual that can be even to those who may not, you know, belong to a certain religion or belief in certain things. It's something spiritual, something that's hard to put your finger on scientifically, mm -hmm. right? Wouldn't wouldn't you yeah. say what are what are your thoughts on that? Why is why does that have such an impact to people watching these reaction videos once yeah. music or art is involved? I agree with you. I think music is highly spiritual and it honestly I feel like it transcends the physical realm. Like you you ask yourself why why did why is music here right what yeah. what purpose does it serve and nobody really knows what evolutionary purpose it serves uh -huh. um we we have hypotheses like some people say some scientists say oh music was the first language that people had even before the actual language there's no way to prove that but we do know that music is just deeply ingrained within the human spirit and yeah. I personally think I feel like it links us to the what I call God some people might call divine spirit and um there there's something just highly spiritual about it that yeah that words can't. can't even describe it yes right? I, yes I, I think that's I could see people responding to that type of you know thought or that type of axiom 
differently, right? For some, or if those of us, of us like myself would like to control things, I could see sometimes the response being frustration. It's like, I want to know, I want to explain, help me understand mm -hmm. why does it affect me the way it does? I want to put my finger on it. And then to others, it brings comfort, right? This idea of, no, oh, it's out there. I can't fully explain it. And to a degree, you being the expert in this, at, from a neurological standpoint, sure, we can say, okay, these sounds and the, the sound waves reach our ear and they reach our brain. And now our brain is communicating with our body and we start dancing and we start feeling because the, these chemicals were released. To a degree, I'm sure you would agree, we can explain scientifically why sounds affect our brain and the rest of us, therefore. But you made a good point. There's parts of it that cannot be put in words, that cannot just be pinpointed with the neurons firing, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How how do we grasp that? And, and this is me coming from the perspective of, ah, I want to understand, right? I'm sure many yeah. are like, whatever, that's just how it is. I love it, kumbaya. But for me, it's like, <laughs> How how do we how do we grasp that to experience it when our neurons are firing but we can't quite hold on to it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah, I think part of it is is I don't know because I feel <laughs> the same way as you yeah. because I, yeah. I want to know like how it I I want to know how does it what, work? Yeah, how does it work? Yeah, there's an interesting um quote that I. If you don't mind, I, I can share please, with you. Please, please. Um, but it talks about this this article. I can send it to you. It's this man who's a, a music, like he loves music, and okay. he also is a very spiritual person. And I loved his take on on how music is a very spiritual experience. So let me um, pull that up for you. And I love if you that. Feel free to share with your audience. I love that. And, I think that'd so be said, perfect. Awesome. Okay. So he says, music is one of our most powerful gateways to connect to our spiritual nature, our divine source, the unseen, as well as to the universe around us and those other divine beings that inhabit it with us. I know of no other medium that can transport us as immediately on all levels of our existence beyond the limits of our intellect and physical body to a higher, often blissful and inexplicable state. Music has the unique ability to transform us independently of our thinking mind to a place uninhibited by the judgments, doubts, and fears that too often dictate the narration of our thoughts and self-limiting beliefs. So I feel like, like this just beautifully explains how important music is to our souls, to our minds, to our, to our, the essence of who we are. Right. Yeah. And I think that, that, that these words and and this thought that music is highly spiritual goes back to like the beginning of written like yes. history right i think mm -hmm. plato yeah plato said music is a moral law it gives soul to the universe wings to the mind flight to the imagination and charm and gaiety gaiety to life and everything so i feel like the questions that you ask and that i ask about music have been asked by like yeah as old as like the time. philosophers yes. yeah right I, I that's what's so fascinating about it because you made you made a good point through this quote thank you for sharing that it transcends I like that word because when we look at different things that have these chemical releases right from exercising to sex to fighting right it, be it the feel good or the not so feel good emotions and reactions we have there's still a way to kind of put a label on it, right? It gives us a sense of control. Well, you know, this activity released this chemical, that's why I feel good. Yeah. Or this, mm -hmm. you know, statement made me angry. Therefore I feel angry because this chemical is released. So there's still quite a bit of activities we do or things we experience as humans that are explainable and that we can label. And therefore I would say have a sense of control. But when it comes to music, I like that word transcendence because it really has so many facets and it really impacts all of us differently. Um, be it, and when I say multifaceted, I'm referring to, you know, the, the the vocalization, the beats, the drums, the visualization, these sound waves, multiple various sound waves all working together. It's interesting that there is something that could impact us so that we still can't quite put our finger on. And perhaps that's why it's so powerful. Is that possible? Mm. That maybe that's why it's so powerful because we can't quite control it because we can't quite scientifically measure and explain it away. I always mm -hmm. say if we can always scientifically explain anything, it kind of makes things a little smaller because we're finite. Yeah. And if we can explain it with our finite mind, how, you know, eternal is it really? Yeah. 
Yeah, right? it makes it a little less magical. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because magical, the things that are super natural is supposed to be super. Because <laughs> they're like, right. sustainable naturally. It's like, well, yeah, cool. But, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, t tell me from the neurological st standpoint, as a neuro neurologist, what is your experience, your thoughts on why people like to watch reaction videos? Not just speaking about music now. But just in general, what is it about? Now, you spoke on these synchronizing brains a bit and the positive effects thereof. Mm -hmm. But what is it about our the way our brain is set up, the way we are as people, that we that people love this? They suck it up. I mean, from anything and everything, let me see someone else experience this. What's mm -hmm. happening here? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, think, I think it goes back to how highly social we are as okay. human beings and the intense need to feel connected to other people. And, um, and it's just, you know, based on our, how our brains are built, um, you know, those mirror neurons are highly activated when we're watching someone react to a music video. And we, we share all of those intense emotions of the, the reactor as they're watching this music video for the, you know, possibly the first time. So we're, we're basically living vicariously through them and bonding with them. And that's deeply satisfying. Um, and I think that, you know, with everything that we collectively as a human race have been through over the past three, four yeah. years, I think that then, you know, and the isolation, I think that's also why music reaction videos have have become so popular because at the beginning of the pandemic we had nowhere else to go right so we gained yeah. we gained that social fulfillment through music and music reaction videos which is like you know the cherry on top of a sundae oh I like music but I like yeah. watching music reaction videos yeah, yeah. more because I get to participate in something with someone else okay do you think Does that answer your question Yes, I believe so. Okay. Do you think okay. that, um, t at least to a degree, um, maybe yeah. you can elaborate a little bit more on your thoughts on things that are also not music related? Is it mm. is it that the the person and I know music reactions are probably amongst the biggest uh, that mm -hmm. field of music in in reactions, but I also have mm -hmm. noticed a, a increasing trend when it comes to politics, right, left or right wing, or people responding to all kinds of content now and now oftentimes those channels i've noticed will react to not just political videos but they'll come from a political angle right so they'll mm -hmm. they'll react to some viral yeah. video of somebody acting like a, a karen right as it's referred um or someone doing something that may be deemed racist or not or people you know talking about red and blue pills and not just politically speaking but with relationships and men and women so they'll they'll react to all kinds of content but they'll come at it from a say political angle or mm -hmm. Yeah, most of the time political, maybe philosophical at times. Would mm -hmm. you say that is the same case as with music reactions? Mm -hmm. That is this people looking for community or Oh, great question. I think I think maybe to a certain extent, and this is again my own personal opinion. I haven't yeah, yeah. seen any research on it, but I, I also think that perhaps it might be a way for people to get an idea of what other people are thinking you know, on an authentic level, right? Because we watch the mainstream news, we watch the mainstream media, but I think a lot of, for a lot of people, the veal has been lifted and people are not really trusting yep. what's being said in mass. And so they turn to perhaps reaction videos or people are more authentic, more authentically speaking their mind to gain a sense of reality and what's really going on. And then also perhaps to validate their own thoughts. Like, am I crazy for thinking this way? Oh wait, yeah. no, no, other people feel the same way. So that's what I, that's what I think yeah, yeah. may be going on. You know, might what do be you think? really onto something. No, I, I love that. I love that because that's a very, un that's a very different angle than what I've thought in the past. And I think you're onto something because often I know people go for bias confirmation, right? They want to mm. be told you're right, right? Or, or they're yeah. looking for someone who feels the same way, thinks the same way. And then the algorithm ironically feeds us more of the same. And yeah. now here we are just looking too. at the world through one lens. Yes. But yeah. you said something that I hadn't considered, which was people are also for one, wanting to the affirmation, I'm not crazy, I'm not wrong, which still ties in with bias confirmation to me, but it's from a different angle. You presented it mm -hmm. from the angle of make, make let me know that I'm okay 
And that makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense psychologically, because not only are we looking to be confirmed in our biases, we are looking to connect. We're looking for someone to say, hey, I see you. You're loved. You matter. You're valuable. What you think is not wrong. You're not nuts. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I like your angle because you are correct. There's so much polarization going on, so much such such a um, overstimulation and uh flooding of stimulation and right mm -hmm. uh and you know maybe you can talk to me a bit about what that does with the brain when we're constantly swiping the swulcher as i call it right the swipe culture we're constantly being mm -hmm. bombarded now you have people watching others comment on it so it makes sense like you said that they would also want to hear someone else's perspective get a sense yeah. of reality from a real person ideally yeah behind this yeah brain. what does what is what's happening here in the brain this constant just everybody wants to comment and opinions and mm. is that natural yeah. for our brains? Are we built for that type of stimuli or do we just yeah. adapt? Yeah, it's, that's a very interesting question. Um, I, I think, I think personally, I don't think we're built for it. I okay. think the, the excess stimulation and um, just constant distractions, everybody's looking to get our attention. Attention is like the major, what is it called? The major commodity these days like yes mm -hmm. um yep. so sure. when when everyone is trying to get your attention there's very very little left for internal reflection for critical thinking mm. for feeling feeling like solid and grounded within yourself right yeah. you're always listening to the outside and then you become reliant on the outside to tell you what's important to validate you and so I think, I think when that happens, that's, that's not a good thing for someone. But I think if someone can use social media as a tool, rather mm -hmm. than the social media using you as a tool, I think can, it can be a very, a, a very rewarding, very positive experience. It's just a matter of doing it mindfully, and not forgetting mm -hmm. who you are as, as an individual and not forgetting how to critically think for yourself yeah. it makes a I, lot of sense yes no it makes that makes a lot of sense and and to be to be personal for a second I feel like even in my own experience while I'm ex ex reviewing these songs reacting and I'm trying to encourage others and I'm opening up where things are opening up in me right of course there's still that dance between you know too much self-disclosure you know wisdom how to word it um yeah. And self-disclosure from a therapeutic standpoint for the benefit of the listener, not to just, you know, dump any suffering on them, but for the benefit of using it somehow. And yeah. what I've noticed even in myself is because of all that stimulation, you know, the camera's on, I'm trying to bring intellectual content, I'm trying to bring empathy, I'm trying to be vulnerable. A lot of my growth at the end of the day, though there's things happening in those videos, most of the growth is when I'm by myself, right? Or when mm -hmm. I'm now taking time going, why did Hiren hit me so hard? What was it about that, right? And some of yeah. that will happen in real time on the camera, but the day-to-day -day work, the real introspection, where those, yeah. I guess those newer pathways, what you would say are being solidified, that happens yeah. in my day-to-day -day behind camera off screen or when I'm reading mm -hmm. a book and I'm sitting there sobbing because something came up and, you know, I'm psychoanalyzing yeah. myself going, crap, <laughs> you know, like yeah. some of that will happen in, in real time with the viewers, but the day-to-day -day work, it, we, each mm -hmm. of us have to do alone for ourselves yeah and that that makes a lot of sense that's you bring up a really great point because yeah. it's during the quiet moments when our mind is quiet that the wisdom comes right and and there is scientific backing for that like there are certain parts of the brain that are activated when you are quiet and not really doing anything and that actually it, it's um what is it called the i forget what it's called it's like a very easy word but anyways the, those parts actually help you process your your day-to-day -day life and help you come up make sense of it and it, wisdom comes out out of it so wow. it's great that that you're doing that like when you're washing the dish have you ever realized like when you're washing the dishes or when you're just driving not listening to any music not having any stimulation some of your greatest ideas and insights yes. come yes right? it's because your mind is still and that wisdom wow. will arise when your mind is still, um, wow. I have, there, there are people who can more scientifically explain it and yeah. I'm no, not, I'm not there no. right now. 
No, I feel like you perfectly explained it because I think, you know, it's one thing to explain things super scientifically. It's another for it to be understandable for your regular person so we can yeah. actually apply it. So no, no, right. I, pref I prefer that because it, that, that does make a lot of sense, which leads me to my, one of my final questions from your standpoint, from your expertise and your experience in life. I read a quote where it says, um, what has been broken through relationship can be restored through relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, in regards to trauma and things healing. And I know that all ties in with the brain, right? I'm just like the brain can heal itself to a degree. What would your advice be from your perspective in life and as a neurologist for the audience when it comes to healing? I know there's a lot of hurting people out there. They watch reaction channels. They look for all the things we just talked about. What would your encouragement be for them to, for their brain to heal for them to heal through relationship and different neurologically speaking. I feel like I have so many things that I would love to say. Say and any, so I'm trying say to anything <laughs> and everything you feel comfortable with. <laughs> so I have several things that I, I found useful and that may be useful for our audiences. And, and number one is don't make any significant action in the height of an emotional feeling, right? Ooh, that's good. Don't don't make don't make a a rash decision when you are at, in a peak emotion phase. Uh -huh. um, even in the comment section, people. <laughs> even in the comment section, that's right. Especially in the comment section. <laughs> um, let let your mind cool off. Let your emotions cool off. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like they can't cool off, go outside in nature. Nature is the biggest healer of all. And you will find that, so the, the rhythms in nature, when you are outside, your own brain rhythms and your heart rhythms synchronize with the rhythms of nature. So if you feel like you're off balance, go out for a hike. That's what I do. And I feel so much better. I go out with my toddler and we just go run around in the woods. <laughs> I love um, and, and I guess my third one is use music. Um to your advantage and use it like I think a lot of people use it for for spiritual connection and spiritual growth so keep doing that and delve deeper during your quiet moments make space for quiet moments to really reflect on the music you listen to and the reactors like what they say as well because I think especially for channels like you there are some very beautiful tidbits of wisdom that you can glean from uh, wisdom and inspiration that you can glean from, from, from your, your reactions. And if you, you know, actually one of my subscribers, I've been kind of low lately. I've been kind of in a slump. And uh, one of my subscribers said, you know, Anna, why don't you start creating some music like you used to? And I was like, Oh my God, I haven't, I haven't picked up the guitar in ages. I didn't know you so played I, guitar. Yes, do it. So do I did sing? it the other day. I do. You have a beautiful voice, by the way. Oh my oh, God. They, oh, Gorgeous voice. Yeah. Thank I love you. your song. I love it. Oh, you're sweet. Thank you. You should though. Yeah. Maybe even put it up on the channel. I know your subscribers would love to. I would love to hear it. <laughs> Okay, I would just sit there and be like, okay, there, there's the healing I was just asking about. How can we heal? Let's go listen to Neurogal MD on YouTube. Talk and educate us and sing. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, maybe one day, maybe I'll do that. And uh, yeah. and I do have to say that your your music and your singing also has inspired me to create, pick up the guitar. And there's something very cathartic about yes. creating music, not yes. just listening to it, but creating yes. it, even if you don't, play an instrument dancing is a form of creation yes, yes. right so so just even if you're not formally trained in dancing just go mm -hmm. just dance in your room it'll make you feel so much better if you feel bad yeah. it'll make you feel even better if you feel good yeah. so I guess that's my final word of advice create something uh, out of the music you listen to <laughs> girl Anna I love this so much that's what I keep saying and I love that that's so therapeutic too and I'm sure even from a from a um, neurological standpoint it's really good huh getting all those yeah. neurons firing when we're singing mm -hmm. or dancing or making something yeah. bringing Keeps something out too. of ourselves yeah <laughs> <laughs> I love that what a what great advice all right you guys heard that you create something make some music dance 
be present even to the reaction videos. I love you said that. You're at choose mm-hmm. choose wisely what we listen to, right? Um, find something of substance and or educational value and listen. Be present to it, so yeah. we can so we can uh, heal our our minds and our, our spirits and our bodies. I love that, and I loved talking to you. Everyone, make sure you go subscribe. You have to subscribe to this lady. You have to. It's an order. Thank you. <laughs> and um, support her and listen to her work and all the things she has to share. I'm so grateful for your time today. Thank you so much, Rosalie. It was an honor.